Hi there, Trevor Duke, first mate yacht here. Doing a video on buffing today. Uh, we are down in southwest Florida, excuse me, southeast Florida, uh, River Bend, Maine. This is a 2005 52 Sea Ray Sun Dancer. Blue gel has not been well kept, getting a lot of Florida heat oxidized. It is hot to the touch with this Florida sun. That's going to uh, prove another problem. Let's take the camera, see what we got here. So, we just have some really, really wicked, wicked oxidation. There is an existing gel coat up here. And just nasty, nasty, disgusting oxidation. We'll do a quick little preview. Another test spot we were doing over there. But uh, this is the uh, definition of chalky and dried out. We're going to focus on the area just uh, under that gel coat repair. I think that's the worst area around. So that's where we're going to go, of course. There's a drastic difference here as well. The bootstripes have been on for the life of the boat, so we'll call that 15 years, excuse me, 10 years. A huge, huge difference in um, weathering of the gel coat. This is what, this is almost unweathered. This is what it should look like. This is what neglected looks like. Uh, it's going to be extremely difficult to make that go away. May not be possible. One of our favorite compounds and pretty much our preferred stuff right now, real shine. This is, uh, we get this from Brian Kirchner up in Jupiter, Jensen Beach. The company is real shine, great, great compound, very affordable, just excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, we have lots of compounds. We really like this. I put it in, in this little uh, ketchup bottle just to make it easier to apply. We're going to have to do at least three passes to get this looking halfway respectable. It is very hot. I'm not sure if you can see me sweating or what other gauge of the heat you have on the video. But it's uh, 3.30, the Florida sun is beaming. Uh, you'll notice when I apply, I do a little tap, tap, tap. Almost all of the compounds we use are a diminishing abrasive. That means that the grit in the compound starts off large, and as we work it, as we're buffing, that molecule, uh, silica, whatever it is, is going to break down to make a finer and finer polish. So it, it would be like a piece of magical sandpaper automatically going from 150 grit all the way up to 500 grit. As far as buffers, we have the DeWalt DW849X, as you can tell by the sophisticated grill. Uh, guards, so wool doesn't get in here. This is actually a brand new pad. I probably shouldn't do this for a video because it is going to be spitting wool all over the place. Uh, it's got the little rubber guard. That's an upgrade from the previous 849. This buffer has been beat up a little bit, but she still works. Uh, these pads, this hook and loop wool, we just bought a buffer. I bought a Makita and it came with it. We typically use the uh, threaded pads, the double sided. You would screw right on there. That's a short shank adapter so you can screw on the pad and it doesn't go all the way through. You don't want the spindle to hit the boat. That would be bad. So this is going to be a, a wooly, wooly demonstration video. i got to hit it before my compound dries. I talk too much and our uh, compound already got a little baked. With these first few passes, we are effectively grinding off oxidation, bad gel coat, just all the hard water and crap that has been cooked on this hull. So we're using a ton of compound. This is a lot of compound, way more than you'll see me using at uh, later stages, later steps. But right now we are in the cutting stage. Come 
lot of pressure, but I keep my buffer flat. When I keep my buffer flat, it doesn't take much to hold it in place. If you were to try and lean on it, the buffer is gonna run you around, you're gonna get real tired, and you're not gonna do as good of a job. You're gonna be inviting swirl marks, just not getting a, an even job. I've still got the buffer going pretty slow while I'm doing these initial cuts. There's two passes there. I'm gonna do a quick wipe just to see what it's looking like under this grease. I'm okay with that much grease. Um, I've used all the grit of the compound. This is just the lubricant left over. If I really wanted to, I could uh, increase the speed of the buffer and burn off this grease, but I don't have any need to. Uh, you should still be able to see some grease. You can see a lot of these little scratches. These are in the gel coat, and that's not going to come out with buffing. If we wet sanded, that would come out. Uh, we may do a little bit of wet sanding to take some of these out. We're getting a big spider web. I'm not, not sure if I have the camera pointing in the right direction. But we can see these little circles of light, little scratches that looks like in a circular pattern. We call that a, a spider web. Those are scratch marks from our heavy compound. We can also see some holograms. We still need to do some work here. Also, I'm still seeing just a little bit, a little bit of oxidation. This shadow is bugging me, but it's going to be extremely tough to get out. Let's do one more quick pass, kind of focus in on those areas. See, I'm the grease we're removing is actually blue. That is old, dead, oxidized gel coat coming off. Also, I pad is very blue. That happens. Don't be afraid of that. Yep. We have a better reflection. These uh, scratch marks are starting to show up even more prominent. This old repair is going away more. And we just have a better reflection overall. Use some Menzerna. This is the Menzerna SIF 1500. You can see we refill our bottles quite a bit here. Uh, on the Menzerna scale, it's coarse, still not as coarse as your structure. Uh, we would call this our medium compound. If I had the full real shine lined with me today, I would be using the step two medium, which is called Rejuvenate, which is great, great stuff. Um, a lot of well-maintained boats, that's as gritty as we need to go. As we rejuvenate, hit it with some of the real shine number three, call it hydrate, and we are good. Don't let boat get the You can see the compound is a little thinner, uh, spreading easier. You can almost count the grit, like little beads of sand with heavy, heavy compounds like restructure. But using a yellow pad, the yellow pad is finer, has less cut than the white wool pad. Softer wool, this one has a little longer nap, but well, that pad was brand new. This pad is uh, probably three quarters dead towards the end of its life. <laughs> to constrain myself to a very tight test spot. You'll see me doing a lot of uh, back and forth, we call that the typewriter. Um, usually you want to mix up your stroke as much as possible. Back and forth, up and down, on an angle, a little half moon. Okay, not seeing a huge difference here. Still have the same color. Still have about the same luster. Um, 
maybe my face is a little more handsome with this clearer reflection. Hard to say, it's really hard to judge those things. But uh, I'm pretty happy with that number two step. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to number three. Okay, I'm gonna use the 3M Perfected, fine, 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 ultra fine foam polishing, polishing pad, part 05733. I know you guys love the part numbers. DW849X. And our fine compound is going to be the Menzerna Super Finish 4000. A great, great fine compound. Uh, it's very greasy. If we're just doing a touch up on some paint or if we're removing swirl marks, not swirl marks that we caused, swirl marks that somebody else caused, um, we can a lot of times just use this with the Makita B06040 in forced rotation with a random orbital buffer and that is just enough polish to knock down swirl marks, really light oxidation, great great stuff. <laughs> I really like going back to foam. The uh, pad is so precise, I can go right up to the edge. I know what I'm doing. It's just a good feeling for old school guys like me. Again, I'm trying to get rid of my soils. Going through some different patterns here. When we can see gumps of compound like that, that means our pad usually clumped, not clumped, probably small compound on this pad too. There we go, that, oh yeah. I really like to fight it. If I see compound gumping up like that, I defeat it with the buffer. However, when instructing people, usually you want to wipe that off, clean your pad, and keep going. But I don't let it slow me down. I think that gets all of our grease. Just as a side note, because I didn't tape this, you'll notice I went to this bottom border. I didn't want to pick up any bottom paint with my pad. I didn't want to introduce any compound to the bottom paint. That's an intentional step. Look at this shiny, perfect reflection. If you are seeing any swirls, I'm thinking they're grease. Notice the ghetto tape on the tripod to get our correct angle. This is a uh, ghetto Amazon tripod. Not going to give you the part number. Do not endorse this purchase. Shiny, shiny. Shiny, shiny. Okay. Well, let's put some wax on. If you have been watching our videos from back when we had zero views to now, I believe, 150,000 views, or pretty darn close, there's one product, one method that has not changed, and that is McGuire's flagship. Wholeheartedly endorsed by First Mate Yacht Care. Just a wonderful product. We can be buffing cars. We can be buffing boats, paint, gel coat, anything we are going to use the McGuire's. It's just great stuff. It works so well, it comes off. Uh, another shout out to Real Shine. We have been using the Hyper Hold and we're getting some pretty good results with that. We also like Rejects. The Rejects is great. Um, this is a, an older gel coat boat. My feelings on Rejects is that it is best for a perfect surface. So if we have a brand new uh, paint job especially, Let's say we're doing a, a new Westport Rejects. Great stuff. It has a nice, uh, unimpeded, perfect paint job to stick to. Great. If you're looking, if you're thinking on a microscopic level and you've got some nasty gel coat, the Rejects is not able to form as great of a layer on that. Clear coat on a car, Rejects. Great. The Warriors is. Uh, has an even bigger edge when it comes to uh, gel coats. Do a little manual spreading. This is just a sure hold wax pad, nothing special. 
I have the Makita BO604 on wiggle mode, not on forced rotation mode. Don't need to heat up the wax, just trying to apply it evenly, get it in every little pore. Just a real thin layer. Nothing too extravagant. And now we wait. Because I'm pretty antsy with the videos, I will definitely wipe it off early. But uh, our rule of thumb is once the wax is dry enough, that by dragging your finger you don't leave anything behind. Uh, we call that the swipe test. That's when you know it's cured. I'm still seeing some streaks when I move my finger. The wax is still tacky. It is not ready. I know I wasn't able to get much in this corner because of the tape. I could have buffed over the line more. I am pretty curious to see how this repair comes out. That was a pretty nasty spot. Whenever you do a gel coat repair, it's not going to be the same gel coat that originally was on the boat. Even if it was the same gel coat, it's been sitting in a drum somewhere, and this gel coat's been aging on the boat. A gel coat repair is never going to match up perfectly. Maybe it will for the first year, but then it's, it's all downhill from there. Especially when you let it get this bad. Take a quick look. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Shiny, shiny, shiny. And now for the great reveal. Well, I would say that's uh, quite a difference there. Nasty. Sexy. Nasty. No tricks, no mirrors, just shine. That is uh, about it. I think that's a good update for our last buff video, which was going on, must be five years old. The owner of that boat since sold, the other employee filming is no longer with us, so it's been a while. Um, I think that's a pretty good uh, shot right there. Just a reflection, the clouds, that's how you do it. Um, another thing I want to mention, a lot of people, once the boat gets this bad, will tell you, oh, we need to wet sand it. There's no hope but to wet sand. And uh, wet sanding is really, really gonna diminish the life of your boat, whether it's paint, I don't know who's telling you to wet sand your paint. Uh, gel coat, you don't need to wet sand. You just need someone who knows how to buff it. You don't want swirls. You want to make sure all the oxidation is gone. Don't listen to these people when they say they have to, when they want to wet sand everything under the sun. There are boats in worse shape than this. And yes, there are some that need wet sanding. But nine times out of ten, it can be done by buffing. Maybe it takes me three passes with a buffer. That's still better than better for the boat and that's still more affordable than wet sanding the whole thing. Um, don't rush to wet sanding. Wet sanding will really, really diminishing, diminish the life of the boat. Especially if you wet sanding the boat two, three times over five, 10 years, it's gone. You're just gonna have to paint it. Uh, let us know if you have any comments in the comments section, any questions, anything else we can address or show off. Any part numbers that I did not address. Maybe these sunglasses. You want to pick up those? Timex. Or you want a first made t-shirt? Who knows? Let us know. Trevor Reeve, First Mate Yacht Care, South Florida, River Bend Marine. Signing off.